Mr Antolini trading at four to nine to keep it. Call me Lord, two to one to get it. As they watch these replays on the screen, if you're Daryl Jacob, Andrew Thornton here, what are you saying when you make your case? Well, you're saying that I was upsides at the time and I've I received a, a heavy bump from the left-hand side from uh, Mr Bargary, and you're saying that it basically it, it stopped all my momentum. Let's listen in. Uh, Mr Jacob, did you suffer interference? Uh, yes, sir, I did, yeah. Can you tell us the edge of hand, please? Yeah, look, obviously, if you... Obviously, I'm down the inside all the way. Um, Jamie's come into the home straight. He's middle to outside, um, up the whole way. Um, and as, obviously, as, as the video, video goes ahead, rolls on. Obviously, Jamie's one, two, three, four, five out at the moment, second last. He's drifting. Obviously, I'm down the rail. My horse is running, running. Jamie's gone from five out, two out. And then from here, the whole way up the line. He's had a stick in his, his right hand. He's coming in on me. As you see, he's coming in on me. He switched the stick to his left. And in a minute here, he's look, he's, he's drift. He's intimidating, and you see now, my horse, if you go back, sorry, half a furlong back, my horse has gone ahead and front. Um, he was about to maintain that, um, and Jamie's horse has pretty much in intimidated me from the last half of furlong um, when he changed his stick into his left hand side. He kept drifting across, drifting across, um, and he basically just he intimidated my horse the whole way up. And, and in the end, you can see my horse has nearly he's nearly gone out over the rails, and I couldn't even I couldn't even keep my horse balanced straight because I was going over the rails. So about here, I've gone a thing. I was about head up here. And then from the top left, you can see it. He's coming in, in, in. Look, push me over the rails. I'm balancing me and the horse, you know, for the last 50 yards. Um, and he's bumping me. He's taking my horse off his stride. Um, and basically, I think um, I think I would have won. I think I would have won, you know, a head, a neck, if I hadn't been intimidated for pretty much the, the last furlong. He's, he's top left, you can see. He's sticking his left hand. He's coming in across me all the time. He's not trying to... To correct, he's coming in, 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 pushing my horse over the rails, as you can see, and I've only got beaten. I've only got beaten. I was a head up at one stage, and I've only got beaten. I think what was it? A head, short neck, something like that. In the end, and I've been intimidated. Okay. Un un unbalanced as well. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Bradley. What can you tell the students? Yes, sir. Obviously, I've travelled like the best horse in the race. Um, I've come for the better ground turning in, and then when I knew that Daryl was my only other opponent. I just started edging across. I've given him just a clip just to get closer to Daryl to have a battle because I knew it was there were going to be weary horses after the last. Um, I've given him every opportunity to go by me. My horse is idling us slightly. Um, and I've just, I keep correcting him. I straighten him up just to keep him rolling. Um, I think he, I've won a neck in the end. I'm the best horse on the day, I think. Um, and I think if it was another furlong, I still would have been in front. Uh, I really think that I was just looking for a battle on two weary, weary horses, and uh, my horse has stuck to it well, and he's uh, he's um, out battled, thankfully. Um, but yeah, you can see just after this hurdle, I've just given him a flick, and he's just to get closer because I knew that he was my only, my only other opponent. Um, and yeah, I have there's a slight bump, but I've won a neck in the end, sir, and I think he's had every opportunity for a good furlong to go by me, and my horse has stuck on gamely, thankfully. Thank you. If you can see, my horse actually was slightly advantaged, and I can't see where Jamie is trying to correct his horse. If I'm being honest, which he just keep keeping, he's not he's not trying to here look top left just there. He, you know, he's not actually. If I can just say, he's he's you know, he hasn't actually put his stick down and tried to correct him off off. He knew he was veering into me, um, and he's just kept he's kept hitting his horse and horse kept bumping off me. Um, I think he should have possibly put his. If he was trying to correct him, like he said he was, he was trying to should have put his stick down and tried to keep the horse more straight rather than rather than drifting across me. Like you see, I, co I couldn't even hit my horse in the last 20 yards because he from here, look, there's no fence around and there's that's that's not even half a horse's width. I couldn't even hit my horse because of it. I think that I, I'd like to say so that I, th I do think that there's enough for the horse to go up. I've, I'm always allowing him room to come by me, um, and I just think that. Where Daryl said that I, I tried to correct him was after the finish line, sir. I, I think before that I have corrected him, just about half a furlong from that. I've, I've pulled him straight and I've straightened up again. There's only one slight bump, and again I don't. I was never headed in the race. Um, 
I don't think I was ever headed. I was always just up, and I have won a neck in the end, and I do think if it was another furlong, I, I would still be the winner, sir. OK, thanks very much indeed. Any questions you want to ask? Uh, would you mind both waiting outside, please? Thanks very much. I think you'll agree that was a really interesting watch, and watching I was watching the exchanges, Fascinating. the betting while that was going on, and while Daryl was giving his, Daryl Jacob was giving his evidence, the winner went from four to nine to four to six to keep it. Did he use all his experience in there? Uh, he took up most of the airtime anyway and made a good point and put the emphasis over on Jamie that he didn't give him any room. He stopped all his momentum. And Darrell's done the right thing. He's trying to win the race for connections in himself. I've okay, got, then. A, Sorry, I've got Luke, a quick quickly. question, quick question for you. If Jamie hadn't dropped his hands early and he'd have gone one half a length, it would have been a lot easier, it'd been a lot easier for them to make a decision, but because it was only a neck... If I was Jamie in there, I would have used it, the fact that I did drop my hand. I did, I didn't. though, isn't it? That's I know. his fault. I, if, that's experience for you, but for me, he should have used that to his advantage. So, so, boys, judgment after that. Keep it or lose it? Keep it. Lose Keep it. it. I think you lose it. You think lose it. We're split. Matt, you've heard that and seen the evidence now. You still stay and keep it. Well, first, I think Daryl Jacob really did paint a... a a pretty nasty picture of actually what happened. He really went for the jugular. All this stuff about, oh, he's coming in five wide, four wide. Well, there's nothing in the rules of racing that says you can't do that. So all that is kind of irrelevant. All the stuff about whether Jamie Bargery should have switched his whip is irrelevant. All that is about is whether Jamie gets a ban or doesn't get a ban. It doesn't make any difference to whether he gets the race or not. So he's kind of hammered home that Bargery was at fault but incidentally, that might have helped Jamie because the stewards can very easily say, well, you know what? He's right, Daryl Jacob. Bargery is at fault, but the actual race result has not been affected. So a lot of dramatic words used by Daryl there. But for me, Jamie Bargery was actually the man who actually said it as it was in the race itself. But it'd be fascinating to see uh, what the stewards do. I think one thing's for certain, Jamie Bargery is going to end up with a little ban. Jacob's made sure of that. Thanks, Matt. Nigel Twiston Davis is on the telephone. I wonder if he's concerned, the trainer of Mr. Antolini. Lydia, between us and Nigel, probably reporting back uh, to owners of what's going on. Lost Kelso tomorrow, which he's not very happy about, with Bristol Demai was due to run there. Right, watch this again. And it seems to me it's a court case. It's a court case in there but, with the stewards. That's what you're meant to do yeah, with what Daryl was saying. Doing. Matt was saying, you know, perhaps there's a bit of amateur dramatics there for Daryl, but you've got to. That's what you. That's the whole the whole point of a stewards' inquiry. You've got to put your point, uh, yeah, which is a biased one across. But this is the angle to watch the winning posts again. What we're talking about with Jamie Bargery on the near side here. Two winning posts at Sandown. So, yeah, you'll see him in a second. He comes up to, to the winning post, see, the first one. He's getting up there. To me, he's getting riding, the better. Stop riding. So th there's no two ways about that. And he would have won at least half a length if he hadn't have done that. Which will increase the calls again for one finishing line at Sandow. Which is probably impossible with the angles, but it would make life you a whole even, lot easier. Look, whether, whether he, if he keeps, even if Mr Antony keeps the race, you can't say if you owned or you rode or you trained the second horse that you'd be pleased, would you? Look at him, he gets absolutely bounced off the rail. Of course you're going to do your best in there. You're going to do the best for yourself, connections. You're, you're better off if you get the race. You've got to do it as a jockey. You've only been professional. You're trying to win your race. <laughs> Jamie's uh, virtually on Daryl's horse. Well, and Daryl's nearly on his horse as well. Two to five, the horse on the right, to keep it at the moment on the exchanges. So went out to four to six during Daryl Jacobs' evidence. Now back to two to five, as punters watching the same evidence as us on ITV this afternoon. Back to you, Matt. Here, come, here it comes, Ed. Here it comes. Back to you. Here is the result of the stewards' inquiry. The placings remain unaltered. The placings remain unaltered and they've weighed in, weighed in for our third race of the afternoon.